Hey my nerds, welcome back. It's another short this week while we get on with editing the video for the science and setting playlist. Spoiler alert, things will be getting a little piratical. In the meantime, I've created this short to talk about an aspect of being an author that's interwoven with the use of setting. One that's largely overlooked during the writing process and that only truly becomes apparent in the years that follow after. Yeah, we're getting meta again. This is me literally talking about the scientific study of literature. So switch off now if that's not going to interest you. But remember, pirates next week. So I caught the trailer for the Van Gogh film this week and in it, Van Gogh says that he was made to be a painter for those who had yet to be born, which is an interesting sentiment. And it's just as true for authors as it is for painters. Our stories have the potential to live on much longer than we do and to influence the thoughts and actions of people long after we're dead, often in ways the author didn't realise at the time when writing the story. Sometimes consciously, sometimes subconsciously, we let all of our modern day attitudes and customs and language seep into our stories. The best way of demonstrating this is by looking back at examples of how the same story has changed over the years in retellings of it. My personal favourite and the one I'll use today is about how the adaptations of Pride and Prejudice have changed over the years. You're probably aware of the Colin Firth adaptation from the 1990s and the Keira Knightley one from the 2000s, but there's also ones from the 1980s and the 1940s too. And that's not even to mention the Bollywood take on the novel Bride and Prejudice, nor the horror take Pride, Prejudice and Zombies. But let's ignore the genre mashup retellings for a moment because that confuses the message a little bit. Each of these adaptations reveals more about how the people of that time interpreted Austen's works than perhaps how things were at the time when she wrote the book. For example, if you were to read the original novel, then watch the four adaptations as an analysis of how attitudes towards the portrayal of women in media has changed over the years, then you would have a whole thesis to write up. The women in the earliest adaptations are more simpering, damsel in distress types. There's even a random carriage chase in the opening of the film. Well, the women in the more recent adaptations are more willful and far more modern in their behaviours. Even the types of dances and clothing changes over the course of the adaptations reflecting what the people at the time of the adaptation's creation believed to be the right kind of style for that era. Or if not that, then reflecting what the creators thought would best appeal to the audience of the time. From dialogue to character development, how we portray an era matters. But while these aspects might not be discernible to the author while they're creating the story, they become more apparent as time goes by and as the norm shifts elsewhere. Do you as a creative need to change and do anything differently because of this? Probably not. You're contributing to the evolution of literature all the same, but it's important to recognize this because with that recognition comes a form of realization that there is more to your story than just entertainment, no matter what it is that you're writing. Whether you mean it or not, your creative works are contributing to the narrative of our time, a narrative that future generations will look back on and both admire and mock us for. If I'm lucky enough to have an awareness of my books after I'm gone, then it's fun to contemplate what those readers will infer according to the way I've portrayed my stories. Take a moment to try and examine your own work in this way. And if you're ever feeling down that your books are going unnoticed in the world, then remember what Van Gogh said, you might be writing for readers who haven't been born yet. And while there may not be an immediate monetary gain to be made from putting your books out into the world, there may well be other benefits that you won't realize for many years to come. All right, my nerds, See you next week for some much heartier piratical fantasy. Have a good one.